Okay, we've got uh, Dave McIntyre from First Baptist Church here to say the invocation. If everybody please rise. Dear Father, we just thank you this day. Thank you for the blessings you give us. And Father, we, uh, we just ask you to keep us a repentant people. And Father, forgive us for where we fail you and where we've turned against you, Father. And Father, we ask now for uh, just a good, good group here and be able to discuss the city finances and, and different projects going on. And Father, just keep us in a good spirit. And, and uh, Father, we just thank you for everything you do, do for us. And we just give you all the praise, the glory, and honor and everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Please remain thank standing you. for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> All right, uh, we have no remote participation request. Call the meeting to order at 608. Roll call. Commissioner Kirkpatrick? Here. Commissioner Ward? Here. <coughs> Commissioner Carnes? Commissioner Cruz? Here. Mayor Downs? Here. Approval of minutes from the regular meeting, February 13th, 2024. If there are no questions or concerns, we'll entertain a motion and a second to approve those as presented. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Ward? Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Ward? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Kirkpatrick? Yes. Mayor Downs? Yes. Have no treasurer's report. Uh, approval of bills to be paid. Uh, if there are no questions or concerns, would entertain a motion and a second to approve those as presented as well. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Kirkpatrick? Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Kirkpatrick? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Ward? Yes. Mayor Downs? Yes. Have no proclamations. On guests, we have uh, Dave McIntyre to address the council regarding the World Changers program. Dave, on up to the podium where you were, and <laughs> your uh, yeah. companion can come with you, and he can, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, we're just here to, we're trying to bring a world changer uh, into this area, and I don't know if you're familiar with it. What it, what it mainly is is uh, we're working through our Baptist church, um, but it's, you know, it, any denominations uh, welcome to help or do whatever, and it's mainly about the kids doing a lot of the work. Um, and adults guide them and show them. And, then, and it's going out in the community. And what we want to do is work on a lot of projects. They, they work on, what are you, 20, 20 projects maybe? 15. 15 or so. There'd be 15. that we'll, We'd start on a Monday and go through Friday or Saturday. And um, they'll, they'll stay at the church and sleep everybody, eat everybody there and stuff. And, then go out and what it really help, how it really helps the, the city is the fact of, especially like uh, people's places that can't afford to get something done that's trouble to the city maybe or, or you know, and there's just no finances there. We don't want to get into jobs that are going to take from contractors anywhere. So it's ones that are just, you know, they either need cleaned up or, or like, they do a lot of porches, wheelchair ramps, uh, uh, siding, uh, painting of the houses, just general good cleanup and making them all look better and, and just, you know. And then, you know, there's we go out in the community, just do other things, clean up around the areas and stuff, and, and then go back and have worship service at night and all there. And, and uh, just a real community effort and, and, and uh, you know. And what, you know, our... I've talked with the church. They're all on board for it and everywhere. And we, we've worked. I've been on several of them. I've been, I've been all down to Kentucky and Tennessee with them, Peoria here in Illinois and several of them, and um, Cincinnati, Ohio. And it, it's just a real, I mean, the city loves it. It's, it's things. Um, so, um, you know, and, uh, well, just trying to get you guys to get on board with us and help us out a little bit and, uh, you know, and we can, we'll address some of probably some issues you're dealing with or some of them with the uh, problems with the city and we'll address those first and then wherever from there, I don't know, you got other dad? This is John Hodge. He's the main missionary with uh, with World Changers and I, um, so. 
Appreciate it. I've been with World Changers for about 26 years full time. Uh, World Changers started in 1990, uh, and through the from there to now, we've had somewhere in the neighborhood of 600,000 volunteers that have gone to different communities. In this general area here, we've been to Thompsonville, we've been to Benton, we've been to Marion, we've been to West Frankfurt. We've done a little bit of work in here in the past, but not specifically had a project here, but had a couple of houses that we worked on here. Uh, but we come to com uh, cities and offer free labor to get at the low-income owner-occupied homes to help those, those people that cannot help themselves. And a lot of cities we go to, they'll use any anything from CDBG monies to city funds to raising up. Uh, people donating to it. Uh, we work with local lumber yards and, and, and that kind of thing so that we're keeping it all here. We'll bring anywhere from 100 uh, to 100 to 150 to 102 to 200 students with 25% uh, of those being adults. And we divide those up into work crews of 10 to 12 and they'll go out and work on the house all week long. We have local churches that will bring lunches to the work site and so that gets them involved with helping people in your community too and seeing the need that it's there. So uh, uh, that's what we've been doing for uh, 34 years, and we're, we would love to be here in 2025. Uh, we're looking at, I think I believe, that second week in July, possibly uh, bringing a group here and, and uh, do that. We, we work on, we want to work on what, what there's a need here, whatever that need is. Uh, we don't want to get into roofing or those kinds of things, but we do all things from siding to painting to wheelchair ramps to decks those kinds of things uh, and typically we uh, city either funds it completely where they buy the materials and then we provide the free labor or we have uh, they'll do it through uh, we've had it 50 different ways so every city we go to is different a lot of them uh, the larger cities will have the CDBG where they're uh, they get monies every year and then we're able to with us providing the free labor that helps them help more people through the years and so we've seen that happen uh, Muncie, Indiana was one of those. I think we went there and their their economic development office was only helping like six people a year off the funding they were getting. And then when we came in, they were able to help 20 people that year because of the we used that, that reduced that amount of money they had to spend. So, uh, but we're looking forward to hopefully being here and being a part of that. We wanted to come to you and just and see if we could work, uh, partner with you and, and uh, make this happen in uh, 2025. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Anybody got any questions? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any questions? Yeah, I mean, I think with being a year off, you know, when I talked to Dave the other day, you know, said they needed to know, um, make their final plans of the next month or so. Um, you know, I told him that, you know, certainly we could have, you know, Doug, Tony work with you to identify some of these properties that, you know, might fall into that category, <clears throat> you know, as, as far as, Funding, and I mean, I think that's a conversation we have to have as a council. Um, you know, I think you, what was the number you talked about? Maybe thirty or forty thousand total, usually. Depending on how many people come, anywhere from twenty-five to thirty-five thousand. Okay, yeah, and that was they answered the question about the lumberyard because I asked them that if they kept everything local, and they said yes. So, um, and we want to work off of the rules that you have and the sure. policies that you have. We don't want to circumvent any of that. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> that way we, we can come back year after year if we, if we can, and uh, we, we don't burn any bridges. So. Right. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, David, we talked the other day about, you know, I'm sure, you know, the church. I did one when I was growing up, and, I mean, I feel like yeah. the church kicks money in and, you know. The, There's some other funding options that's probably yeah. in there. Yeah, and, too. I mean, raising, you know, I mean, DuCoin's always been pretty good about finding people in the community that will donate money. So, right. um, you know, I, I I think we probably want to go that route first before we sit and commit, you know, a certain amount of thousands of dollars to that. Sure. Um, but we'll talk about it, you know, amongst ourselves and okay. over the next, you know, couple of weeks and try and have a decision to you. Well, that's what. Another thing is they do have all all insurance is supplied through there, so okay. no liability, you know, anywhere else. So okay. Yeah, we have liability yeah. insurance, and everybody's the secondary accidental policy on everybody that comes. And okay. That those kinds of things. So that's that just those a big issues are covered. Okay. All right. Yeah, we'll talk as a council. I'll talk to Ruth, make sure we're all covered on the insurance on that side of it. She didn't have any other concern. All right. Appreciate you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you guys. Very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, on appointments, we got a motion vote to hire uh, Bill Klein and Trinity White as part time telecommunicators in the police department. Uh, if nobody has any questions or concerns, would make a motion or entertain a motion in a second to do so. 
So moved. Motion by Commissioner Ward. Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. And motion to vote to hire Samuel Gibson as an auxiliary officer for the police department. If there are no questions or concerns. We entertain a motion and a second to do so. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Ward. Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Kirkpatrick. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. <clears throat> we have no consent agenda, no public agenda. Resolutions, we have 2024 R02-02. Resolution authorizing purchase of real property, and this is for final approval. This is for the uh, house right across the street on, from the library here. So, if there are no questions or concerns over the last two weeks, would entertain a motion and a second to do so. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz, uh, Kirkpatrick. Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. Resolution 2024 R0204. Resolution authorizing Delta Regional Authority grant award to the city of DuCoin, and this is also for final approval. If there are no questions or concerns. Would we'll entertain a motion and a second to do so. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz. Second. Second by Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Roll call. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. <clears throat> Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. Uh, ordinance 2024 002 02 is an ordinance for annexation. 1453 Washington Street, and this is for final approval. Would entertain a motion and a second to do so. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz. Second. Second by Commissioner Ward. Roll call. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. Uh, resolution 2024 R02-05. Resolution authorizing purchase of hydraulic hammer, and this is for debate and public display. This would be for use in the uh, street and water department when they have water breaks and we need to bust up the concrete. Uh, purchase price was 10 5 Ruth, mm -hmm. 1500 um, If there are no questions or concerns, would entertain a motion and a second to put it on public display. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz. Second. Second by Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Roll call. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. <clears throat> Kirkpatrick. Yes. Ward. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Resolution 2024 R0206 is a resolution authorizing purchase and repair of diffusers and connections in the aeration tanks from Parkson Water, and it's for the water treatment plant. And this would be for debate and public display as well. And this was, we had some pumps go down, right, Ruth? That was going to be causing us some issues or way to everyone. So. Yeah, was, uh, a couple of pumps went down, and they're just wear wore out. And they, we need them, you know, as soon as possible to get them done. What was the total price yet? I'm working. I see. Um, Hundred and twenty thousand. <coughs> Emergency stuff's always real expensive. Hundred and twenty thousand. Never, never can be like five grand. <laughs> no. All right. Um, if there are no questions or concerns, we entertain a motion and a second to put on public display. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz. Second. Second by Commissioner Ward. Roll call. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. And last but not least, resolution 2024 R0207, resolution condemning 412 West Summer Street. And this is for final approval. So this, was a, a, this was a fire they just recently had. Okay. So. Uh, I would entertain a motion and a second to approve that. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Second. Second by Commissioner Cruz. Roll call. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes. All right. Other business? I don't think we have any. Um, commissioner's comments? Kaylin? Nothing for me. <coughs> Wade? Mm, no. No. Mike? Nothing. Chill. Nothing. Ruth? I don't think I have anything tonight either. It's a first, I think. Um... Anybody in the audience? I wanted oh, one thing and then a question. Yeah. Um, we are under a burn ban until further notice. Yep. So just as an FYI. And then I had a question about the annexation. That's Prisman Group, right? Correct. So is that part of their their uh, expansion or what's the reasoning behind the yep. annexation? Yep. Part of the expansion. Okay. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, Chief Dakota was going to talk about the burn ban a little bit too. So, Page one come up. Okay. 
I appreciate that. <laughs> so good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to make you quickly aware of the situation. Um, Pete explained it pretty thoroughly because it is what it is. But uh, this afternoon, kind of regionally, and as it trickled down uh, to the county level, there was uh, there were some meetings and telephone calls in coordination with all the local fire chiefs in Perry County. EMA officials, um, basically every public safety official, and it became apparently uh, aware to everybody that we needed to issue immediately a burn ban. Um, there is uh, been a, a significant increase in incidents in our area. It is completely irresponsible for anyone to light anything on fire at the moment other than a birthday candle uh, or a candle in your house to make it smell better. Um, and out of that, you know, just the collectiveness of uh, we are uh, issuing that out of abundance of caution. There is no uh, end date on that because as we are all aware, the weather has been, uh, in spite of what we think is going to happen, uh, it's been highly unknown. So we're expecting um, extremely high winds tomorrow. It's a culmination of several windy days. Things continue to dry. Um, and we haven't seen the moisture that we normally see by this time of year. Um, but everybody's anxious to get out, get their yards cleaned up, get started, and we're all just a little bit ahead of ourselves right now. And we need to slow down and take a pause and uh, enjoy the weather tomorrow to yourself and uh, don't light anything on fire. So that's kind of the message. So pretty simple. Uh, we will be adding some extra staff tomorrow uh, because we do expect some very difficult conditions. We are hoping for an abundance of rain tomorrow, but again, there's a chance that we won't see that. And again, in discussion with EMA, there's a, there's a chance we don't see the amount of rains that we're hoping to see, um, but we do know that the winds will sustain after the front comes through. They'll just change directions, so those strong winds are going to be with us for a while. So um, just be aware of that. Talk to your neighbors. Talk to your friends. If you see somebody that's doing something stupid, call us. Or come out and talk to them. Um, offer them some advice. And, uh, and go from there as necessary. So again, questions, concerns for that, contact your local fire chief. Of course, you're welcome to call the DuCoin Fire Station, speak to me directly about that as well. All right, thank you for your time. Thanks, Chief. Thank Anybody else in the crowd got anything? Thank you anyway. Thank you anyway. Well, as you know, the city came and took everything out of my yard. The city took stuff out of my shed when Judge Campanella issued the order. Nothing was supposed to be bothered inside the shed, but everything was taken out of the shed, thrown away, etc., etc. My mail was opened and went through. My medicine was opened and went through. What was thrown away that they thought I didn't need, they threw away. Uh, they opened other stuff, not everything. They threw a lot of stuff away. Uh, they threw brand new blankets away, brand new clothes, coats, flashlights, purses and wallets, including Eddie's. My car keys are already also gone. It's going to cost me about 300 for the man to come do me a car key. Uh, My stuff came back Friday at 2 o'clock because I'm no longer staying where I was staying for a while. By the time I got home about 3.30, the city had already came and removed some of my stuff that I had just taken to the yard that I had carried home from where I was at. Okay. I'm trying to read it all. All right. Doug Tony told me Friday or he had told a policeman, a policeman had told me that Doug Tony said he was going to come by and check Monday, that I better not have nothing in the shed that I'm not supposed to have. But it was never said what I could or couldn't keep in the shed. It was just, and it was said at city council in front of Alonji and Judge Campanella, I was supposed to have a tarp on the shed. Everything <coughs> on the other side of the tarp uh, wasn't supposed to be touched. Nothing in the trailer was supposed to be touched. Nothing on the car was supposed to be touched or looked inside. Well, okay, all that was done. My tarp is down. I no longer have the tarp. My hookers that I had hooked to hook the tarp to 
those hookers are gone too. Okay, as you know, my tent that I was using for a storage shed, that's gone, stuff that's in the shed is gone, in the storage shed's gone. I was sleeping in a camo tent. I got pneumonia. I had pneumonia all of January. Okay, so now I'm sleeping on a cardboard and blankets out in the open. I don't even have the shelter of a tent. So I'm sleeping out there. The dew gets the blankets very, very wet. Okay, Doug Tony and his wife came by Saturday. They took a picture of me sleeping, so I'm sure you all are aware of that. Also, Thursday night, I ran into someone at Dollar Store, and they wanted to know what I was doing with the cardboard. I said, well, I'm getting cardboard because that's going to be my pallet where I sleep. So when they went home about 8 o'clock Thursday, the gentleman got his son. They worked all night Thursday night into the a.m. on Friday. They made me a nice little house. They put a floor, insulation, another floor, and carpet. The wall, I'm sorry, the walls, a wall, insulation, wall. Okay, on the roof, roof, insulation, roof. Then to make it double warm, they was going to put a tarp over it. I knew nothing about it till Sunday about 4 o'clock. So when I went to this gentleman's house on another business matter, the gentleman asked me, did I see the tent, or not the tent, the little house shed. It was big enough to where Eddie and I could get in. Eddie's head would not reach. It would be about 12 inches. It was big enough we could put like a cot, which the city threw Eddie's cot away, $44 plus tax. Uh, stuff wasn't trash. If they're supposed to clean up trash, take trash. Don't go in my mail. Don't go in my medicine. Don't decide what's good to throw away because what's good is not trash. Okay, so that was fixed up. So we could each have a little cot in there and plenty of room to put chairs if we wanted. It would keep us warm and dry. All right, that was gone. It was taken away about 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning Friday. I knew nothing about it till Sunday. The man asked me if I knew about it. I said, no, I did not. He said, well, here I built it so you don't have to sleep on a pallet on the ground. And he said, I went by about 8.30 or 9 o'clock because he said, I thought you was in the shed, but I didn't want to look, which I wasn't. And he said, so I was coming by about 8.30 or 9 o'clock in the morning to look how you liked it. He said, do you realize how sick I was? What a sick feeling I had in the that's pit of my minutes, stomach. That's five minutes, Joyce. Okay, Joyce, that's your time. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> All right. Would uh, entertain a motion and second to adjourn at 630. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Cruz. Second. Second by Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Roll call. Commissioner Cruz. Yes. Commissioner Kirkpatrick. Yes. Commissioner Ward. Yes. Mayor Downs. Yes.